of Dakota. So Patrick, it's a pleasure to have you here. So let's talk about uh, some of the types of jobs and industries and careers that, you know, Golden Path uh, Solution can help people yep, with. Yep. So I think this is where there's, uh, there's a lot of exciting opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people will ask, well, does this apply for two-year jobs or mm -hmm. four-year jobs or, mm -hmm. you know, or degrees? Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is it could be any of those things. And so really, employers have different needs um, in terms of their future workforce. Mm -hmm. Some might not need any uh, higher ed. They mm -hmm. might just need um, certification or training that they can provide, sure. whereas other organizations might need two-year or four-year degrees. And what we're starting to see, especially in some of these um, newly forming industries that mm -hmm. are going to be hugely beneficial for North Dakota, think precision egg, uh, energy, new mm -hmm. types of energy, mm -hmm. carbon sequestration, all those sorts of things. We're starting to hear more about customizable degrees or new programs that uh, institutions like NDSU are trying to figure out how to put together um, to serve the future workforce needs that maybe we don't have today because these technologies are so new. Uh, M-State just announced a program that they're going to be doing to help um, people do maintenance on electric vehicles. Mm. So it's really interesting uh, when you think about students and how they think about future careers, they might not even know about some of these jobs because we don't even know about these jobs because these industries are evolving so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where this can be really exciting too. Um, you think about initiatives like the Grand Farm. Uh, which is out, just broke ground in Castleton last week. If they need a certain type of person uh, to support the autonomous work that they're doing, or Grand Sky up in Grand Forks, if we can help students understand that these are hugely influential, impactful jobs for our state, but they also are kind of on the cutting edge of technology, mm -hmm. and help them understand what skills are needed, then we can help you know get students interested in those programs, um, and ultimately get get connected with those companies that you know could be the future of our state. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting uh, mm -hmm. when you think about the different types of industries. But I also don't want to forget about you know our classic manufacturing or healthcare, some of those those um, industries that have been around for a while. Because in some ways, they are in desperate need of workers, just like you know these new industries are. Mm -hmm. So how do we make this work for all of those? companies and all of those industries it's been really exciting to be kind of part of that conversation wonderful so I can you share one of the a story with me of you know maybe as some students or you know an employer that your company have helped yeah yeah um, we were so there's two that I'll share um, one we were uh, working with Bobcat mm -hmm. on a welder okay because uh, they need welders yeah. and and I don't think students understand that welding is um, huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. It can be something that you can make over six figures doing welding, um, believe it or not, because they're in high demand. Mm -hmm. we, are, we have this process where we actually interview people in the job to figure out what are the skills needed, what's the day in the life, and that's what we share with students. We were talking to this welder in Bismarck, and they were talking about the welding that they do almost as an art form. Mm -hmm. And uh, he even, the guy we were talking to basically said he can look at a, at a machine and he can tell instantly if it was one that he did a weld on because he almost has a signature style associated wow. with it. And so that was that's really cool. That's interesting. And so we get, we get to learn about that. We get to, we get to understand and, and kind of get exposed to, to mm -hmm. things like that, which is super fun. Mm -hmm. um, another example is we actually had a student that... Um, is a, a junior um, in West Fargo. Um, wasn't sure what he wanted to do, uh, but he really loved working with his hands. And um, there's this uh, job called machining. Mm -hmm. um, we got him connected with an employer. He ended up going to NDSCS, uh, getting his school paid for. We took advantage of a program that North Dakota runs called the North Dakota Career Builders Program, mm -hmm. where the state of North Dakota will help pay tuition that employers are willing to contribute to a student. Mm -hmm. And he basically got a two-year degree um, for, you know, free uh, for him. And now he's got a job that he loves uh, working for a company. And between uh, the first and second year of his, of his degree, he was able to work for this company. So start to get to know people, get to know relationships mm -hmm. and different things like that. So, so those have been some really exciting um, wins. Uh, when we talk to, when we go to classes and we talk to them about careers and we're explaining to them about things, uh, engineering, a lot of times we'll go into a classroom and somebody will say, I want to be an engineer, but that's as far as they go. And so we get to talk to them about what does a manufacturing engineer do? What does a process, con or a su process support engineer do at Marvin Windows? Um, there's all these different flavors of engineering. How do we help students understand that and make, mm -hmm. help them make better decisions? And listening to their questions is always super fun. Wow, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, uh, that's something that's an interest for um, 
that we have with professional lunch also. Uh, I find out even at NDSU here, a lot of times when I talk to students, I'm asking them questions they might have for engineer. They are in the major, they're about to graduate, but they don't know, you know how, what they're going to be doing as an engineer. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really pretty interesting, uh, and I'm glad you touched on that. So tell me, what is, uh, what is the biggest challenge that you think that students face, you know, having decided on a major that they don't know what they're going to be doing? I mean, how does that play out when they are looking for a job? Yeah, it, it's an interesting question. And, and I went through it, certainly. I don't mm -hmm. know if you went through it. But you go into school, and maybe you don't necessarily know mm -hmm. um, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's actually OK. I actually think we need to be careful not to over promise what we do and mm -hmm. you know people are still going to want to try different things and try different paths yeah. but I think what we can do is help students understand um, that there are different paths that if they have a skill um, let's say they're a thinker and a learner that there are literally hundreds of jobs that need that skill mm -hmm. and let's take some of the pressure off of students to try to figure out what is the one thing I should do mm -hmm. because the reality might be there are hundreds of things you can do as long as you hone that skill mm -hmm. and I kind of go back to myself you know, I graduated with an English major. I remember thinking at the time, and everybody would make jokes, the only career option I had was basically to go and teach, mm -hmm. or the joke was, you know, work at a fast food you yes, know, restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that wasn't true. Like, yeah. I could have been a journalist. I could have been an investigative reporter. I could have been a teacher. I could have done, or I actually could be in communications. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many different things that I could do, and now that I'm in the workforce, there are so many different jobs that need those skills to be a good communicator. I actually might say that being an English major was one of the best things for the, the email age, mm -hmm. being able to write clear, concise emails. So students, I, I want them to think broader. Uh, don't, don't put so much pressure to figure out the one thing you can do. Just figure mm -hmm. out what you're good at mm -hmm. and then figure out what are all the different jobs that need that thing that are willing for, to pay me to do what I love to do. Um, and I think that's really important. And the other thing I would say too for students is to explore, mm -hmm. try different things. I think in, um, in high school, a lot of times, students might just be like, I need to take this class and this class and do the AP class and all this stuff uh, to have the best resume possible for when I graduate. But really do take time to try different classes to see if you might like something that maybe you didn't think that you would like, um, you know, just sitting there. Try it out, see if it's something that's interesting. Try different activities. Uh, maybe take a summer job that is doing something that you're not quite familiar with. Because those experiences actually will help you, even if you like it, it might help you uh, cho choose a different career path. And if you don't like it, that actually can be just as useful, mm -hmm. knowing what you don't want to do. So, um. yeah, but just don't sweat it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so is Golden Path your first 